Hello everybody, this is Dr. Novak again, and I've had a few requests to talk about salt in the aquarium. And that's exactly what I'm going to talk about in this particular video. So uh, it may interest it. some of you and other of you, you may not be interested in all in any of what I have to say here. Um, some hobbyists have a prerecollection about salt and believe that their fish do better with it and add it whenever they do a water change. Okay, that's also true with pond people. They, they add it constantly. I've heard of adding salt, uh, what they call a reef lake salt. And this lake salt is uh, supposed to... Uh, bring up the pH and make the water more suitable for Mabunas and Tanganyika cichlids. Okay, the fact is salt is a known infection preventative on wounded fish, but is not a panacea. Salt also added to aquariums replaces electrolytes, that's as in sea salt, such as potassium, sodium chloride, calcium and magnesium. These are all removed from the water by chloride cells located in the gills of the fish. Electrolytes are chemical compounds that separate into solution, which is essential for the uptake of oxygen and the, re and the release of carbon dioxide and ammonia across the gill membranes. Fish in a hypoosmotic media like salt in the aquarium or pond otherwise known as brackish water, maintain higher concentrations of water and lower concentration of ions that are in the surrounding fluids. This creates a concentration gradient, and this results in osmosis, the transportation of water out of the fish's body. The fish respond by drinking more water. By the way, freshwater fish do not drink water. They take it into osmosis. And, uh, Thus, they are dependent on the level of dissolved solids in their surroundings to help them maintain a healthy electrolyte to water balance than it would in a solution of isotonic solution. Okay, fish absorb most of the water they need through their skin by osmosis, not through their gills. So, when you add salt, the fish will start drinking the water instead of doing it through osmosis, okay? Because most freshwater fish cannot drink their surrounding water, and uh, salmon is an exception to the, to the rule for a freshwater fish, when you place these freshwater fish in salt water, they dehydrate. The gut, along with dissolved ions like sodium, potassium, chloride, absorbs excessive water swallowed. The excessive ions are secreted out of the body by chloride cells, that are embedded in the gills epithelia. The cells must always be bathed in a solution having the same osmotic strength as their cytoplasm. This is one of the reasons why fish and other animals have kidneys. Saltwater fish drink and retain water by freshwater fish have the opposite problem. They must get rid of excessive water as fast as it gets into their bodies by osmosis. In some freshwater fish, a higher electrolyte level, particularly of sodium chloride, calcium, and magnesium, will help pull flu fluids through the body, which also stimulates the natural mucus coat on fish to resist parasites, bacteria, and fungus. That would be the reason why they say add salt to add uh, more mucus onto the fish. This process has a downside, resulting in the loss of many electrolytes. However, some of these trace elements can't be replaced by ions contained in fish food. But by far, most common method is through the movement of a substance against an osmotic gradient using energy. This usually involves an exchange. Sodium ions are taken from the water and ammonia ions are taken from the fish and they are exchanged. This effectively rids the fish of ammonia, but koi have no problems of ridding themselves of ammonia, unlike, let's say, shark, without any help from us. Now, koi, of course, or Cyprinia carpio, uh, have a very good 
way of ridding themselves of ammonia. That's why they can, uh, uh, in the winter time, they go dormant, uh, lethargic, and they have no problems of ridding themselves of ammonia at all. Compared to some fish have a harder time. And uh, that's just one thing to remember. Depending on the fish you're keeping, depends on how fast they can rid themselves of ammonia and not have ammonia poisoning. Chloride ions are exchanged for carbonate ions, which help in maintaining the pH of the body fluids. This is just another reason that adequate calcium, as in total hardness GH, carbonated, as in alkalinity KH, and electrolyte levels are very important. Generally, salts, which are trace elements, not just sodium chloride, can affect osmosis. Magnesium can also play a paramount role as well. Calcium can affect and just as importantly be affected by proper osmotic Osmo, osmotic functions. Boy, that was hard to get out, wasn't it? <laughs> Sulfates have been shown effective in improving nutrient absorption and toxic elimination. Magnesium found in laterite plays a role in the activity of more than 325 enzymes and aids in the proper assimilation of calcium. However, for our fish, the downside of adding salt is its metabolic rate will unquestionably increase with the addition of salt in the aquarium. The prolonged usage of such stresses the fish besides increasing their metabolic rate dramatically, shortening the fish's life span. Unless, of course, it is a brackish water fish, which is designed for those particular water conditions. When the metabolic rate of a fish increases, its demand for oxygen, okay, levels increase. Okay, this places unneeded stress on the aquarium animals. So, as salt levels increase, our freshwater fish demand for oxygen begins to increase because you're stressing out the animal with that salt in it if it's not a brackish water animal that you're keeping. You may have noticed that people that use salt in their ponds and aquariums, okay, will have to add air stones or some means of agitating the water to increase oxygen concentrations. Okay, this is, this is only because oxygen is going to reach a uh, certain level at a certain uh, temperature. Okay, unless you're going to, let's say you're keeping your oxygen levels, and I mean your aquarium temperature, let's say at 82 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, your oxygen is only going to raise so high for that particular temperature, unless you're going to uh, inject oxygen into the water with an oxygen reactor. Or with a Ventura that may add more oxygen to your aquarium or pond. And if you have to add salt to your aquarium or your pond, for that matter, then you are only adding a band-aid to a problem that exists instead of fixing the problem. If you are adding psychological salt for high nitrites, okay, NO2, then your filter is grossly inadequate for your pond or your aquarium needs. Now, salt does not affect nitrates. A nitrate reading, a nitrite reading, not nitrate, but nitrite reading, a 0.2 parts per million is very serious, especially at elevated temperatures and high pH level, which, by the way, might otherwise be acceptable. When nitrite levels are above zero in bulk water, methoglobin forms in the fish's blood that prevents it from delivering oxygen to the cells, resulting in nitrite toxicity. Methoglobinemia is what that is called. So as nitrites increase, as you know what happens to the cells cannot carry the oxygen. 
Ironically, the re remedy for that, like let's say if you have high nitrites in your aquarium or your pond, and this is the ironic part of the whole thing, ironically, the rem remedy for this is salt. The chlorine ions in salt reduce and hinder the toxic effect of nitrites. Not nitrates, but nitrites. So that's one little trick that pond people do. They, When they go through the process of uh, going from winter into spring, they'll add salt because they know the process of the ammonia cycle, then the nitrite cycle has to go through, and then the nitrates, okay? So they'll add the salt because of what it does, okay? However, for more important than adding salt to one's aquarium is to have a proper redox potential, which describes the ability for the loss of an electron by a molecule, atom or ion, to gain an electron by another molecule, atom or ion, okay? Without this re Reduction redox potential, many minerals cannot be absorbed properly and assimilated. So, in other words, uh, you should have a higher redox potential. So, it is very important to keep a positively charged pond or aquarium redox potential of approximately 200 to 300 millivolts. Now, that's in fresh water. And salt water, excuse me, in salt water, that would be about Mm, 375, 425, via proper dissolved oxygen levels, calcium and other electrolytes, proper cleaning procedures and water changes, and UV sterilization can help too. Now, let's understand that when, oh boy, this gets into redox, and a lot of people don't understand, and especially in freshwater, redox. What happens and with, with redox, everybody knows in salt water to keep a higher redox potential. Okay, this can be done by um, an oxygen uh, impregnator of, of sending the salt water through, an, through something where it will impregnate the salt water with oxygen that can raise your redox also ozone can raise your redox and uv light can raise your redox these things can be used also in fresh water usually people don't use ozone in fresh water but that uv light yes very common to use it but we're trying to keep a proper millivolt reading so, electrolytes and calcium and everything uh, are at the right levels and can be taken in by the aquarium fish. As redox begins to drop below 250 for our freshwater aquatic animals, we start heading into problems. Now, uh, this may step on a few people's toes, and I, I don't like doing that, but a deep sand bed filter has a lower redox than if you use a plenum, like I have described. And that redox affects the health of your aquatic animals, okay, and their ability to fight off diseases and things like this, okay. I know there's always going to be exception to the rule. There's always going to be a person who says, oh, I have this deep sand bed filter. It's four or five, six inches deep, and everything's just fine. Is it? You know, that that's almost, you know, the question you have to ask. Is it really fine? Is, are your fish going to live as long as you're supposed to? Are they susceptible to fluctuations in their water chemistry? Um that, well, we know that as water chemistry goes down, fish can adjust to it. We understand that. There's no problem that. As redox starts going down, your fish can adjust, but it doesn't mean they're going to be healthy as they were, let's say, in the wild or something like that. And this is what causes a lot of problems with, like, sensitive fish, like discus, for example, you know constantly getting sick, constantly have to have the water changes, constantly have to be attended to because 
Anything can almost happen, and they wind up getting sick on us. Well, redox also has a part to play into that, but most freshwater people don't even dabble into understanding what redox can and cannot do to properly maintain um, healthy fish. And that's almost a whole nother video into itself to understand that. And that requires equipment like a redox meter and everything else. But if you took a redox uh, probe and you put it down into a very deep substrate, uh, you would find out your redox would lower, get lower and lower and lower. Okay. Higher the redox, the better your aquatic animals and the better your bacteria will behave. The lower and lower your redox, the bacteria start dying, they can't reproduce, and you may even end up, as the redox starts going too low, is anaerobic conditions. Okay? That's what happens as substrate gets deeper and deeper. If you do the same test, let's say if you were using a plenum like I show, whether you use a moving one or non-moving one, and you test it, let's say the bottom of the plenum, you know, where the open space is, you will find out it will have a higher redox than the redox that is in a deep sand bed filter. And this has already been proven. This I'm not saying anything new here. I'm not saying anything that has not already been researched and written about. Um, so adding salt could give you a misguided sense of security that uh, that you think you're doing something good when you're not. But this goes even one step further. I'm going to explain to you that. Okay, so in order to wrap this up, I wanted to explain to you a scientific experiment that was conducted by uh, undergraduate students at the University of Michigan. And this was to determine what the metabolic rate of a freshwater fish, how it would change if you added salt to an aquarium. Okay, cyprinid is what they use, which, which is carp, you know, goldfish, carp, like fish. And uh, the experiment was done on goldfish. And which is good because usually when you're in college, uh, you do a lot of experiments on goldfish. Anyhow, the experiments uh, were to gather information involving salinity tolerances and preferences. Okay. And because you hear a lot of rumors and stuff about salt. So they were gathering information on the goldfish and their metabolic rate at 10 parts per trillion sodium chloride levels. Now, to give you a little example, uh, in saltwater aquariums, a specific gravity of 1.020 to 1.025, which is about 27.3 to 33.75 parts per trillion, um, is what saltwater is. And they were only at 10 parts per trillion. And, uh, of course, their metabolic rate was to be their comparison when they added the salt. It, uh, the temperature they used, the mean temperature was uh, 65 degrees Fahrenheit or 18 degrees centigrade would be their comparison because they knew that this cooler temperature would carry more oxygen in it than if you were to do the same experiment, let's say, at 90. So... Goldfish are a lot more comfortable at a cooler temperature, and that's why they did it, to keep their metabolic rate down to uh, absolutely perfect to see how they would react to the salt that was given to them. Okay. What it was determined by the undergraduate students was uh, a goldfish, or cyprinid, would need... 100% more oxygen per milligram of body weight than it would in just plain fresh water. Oh, that's a lot. Okay. In many books and magazines, it states, quote,
that salt will also help relieve some of the metabolic stress on the fish so its immune system can fight off bad bacteria. Help relieve some of the metabolic stress. Mm, that's not what the undergraduate students found out. And according to the studies that were conducted, that is very misleading and very inaccurate, that statement. But it says it right in books. Because nobody's really did test on it. But these students did test it. And after all, what animal breathes heavier, drinks water continuously when it normally doesn't drink water at all and needs more oxygen to sustain itself when it's supposed to be relaxed? Right? So according to their studies, adding salt to an aquarium with tropical fish, freshwater fish, actually increases, not decreases, the metabolic rate of the fish. And we know that when your metabolic rate increases, it begins to stress out the animal of which you are keeping. It's the same way with humans. As our metabolic rate increases, we are being stressed out. And we will need the same things. We will need either drugs to help bring it down, or you're going to need oxygen, uh, an oxygen tube put on you because your body's not carrying oxygen correctly. Same thing as fish, what salt is doing to them. So this is something to remember that a long time ago it was believed that salt helped metabolic stress. But we now know today it does not relieve metabolic stress in freshwater animals, okay? Unless the animal is designed to take a brackish water system. But otherwise, freshwater fish do not like salt. It's been proven. Uh, it affects their osmosis ability. It makes them start drinking water. These are things you don't want. Unfortunately, uh, the reason they use it a lot, of course, on ponds and stuff, is, of course, nitrite toxicity. They want to try to keep that down. And, of course, they think that if they keep the salt levels high enough, it will help with parasites. All these are pretty well, you know, things that they believe in, but... I personally have been keeping fish for 50 years in ponds and never had these problems where I needed to keep salt in it constantly in my aquariums. And salt is not good for your plants either. But it's just something to think about if you are going to use salt, what it's doing to your animals. I guess if you don't care about your animals, then you can do what you want. But it's just something to think about. Now the research is out and we know a little bit more about salt, what it really is doing and how much more oxygen the aquatic animal needs to sustain itself as you keep increasing salt levels, unlike saltwater fish or unlike your brackish water fish that know how to deal with the salt, where a freshwater fish does not know how to really deal with it. Anyhow, until next time, this is Dr. Novak. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching.